Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. And today I will be reading a multi-character listener by me. So let's get into it. Lenny. Lenny was not used to this nature of what happened that night. After all, most of his nights with you were very stable, very normal, and they did not consist of you screaming in the middle of the night. So, when he's woken up strangely, out of nowhere, by a scream, no less, no wonder he jumps out of his bed and feels as though his heart is about to pop out of his chest just because of how scared he was. Why, Anne? What's going on? What are you screaming about? He asked, looking around and seeing if there was any sign of danger. Anything that would get you to scream to this point. But then he looks around and sees nothing. There is nothing at all. And then he realizes that it might just be a nightmare. And he lets out a soft sigh. He's not angry with you or anything. He's just relieved that it was not anything serious. And nothing that would bother either of you in the end. He took you into his arms gently putting a hand in your hair and stroking it as you whispered. It's all right, Wyan. I'm right here. There is nothing for you to worry about. I promise. And even though you don't respond at first, he just keeps on holding you. I'm right here. No one is going to hurt you. It was just a dream. He whispers. And he nod, eventually quieting down completely while you're within his arms. And once it's all over, he doesn't ask you about the dream. He knows if you need to tell him, you will. He just stays by your side. And he will be there, awake, holding you until you sleep again. And if you don't want to sleep, then he's sure to stay up with you. And do any fun activity that may distract you from the dream that you've had. Just to make you feel better in the end. Xiao. Xiao was... Well, his own relationship with dreams was not really anything good. Especially when he used to eat people's dreams. He was forced to. So, sleep time and having dreams and stuff, it was not really his thing, and not something he liked to think about. He slept, but his dreams were non-existent. To him, sleeping was simply like time traveling, closing his eyes, and there is that blank time, something that he cannot see, and boom, it's the next day, nothing at all in between. But for you to wake up in the middle of the night screaming, he's quite glad he doesn't have dreams. He can't imagine what must have made you feel this way. He can, to some extent, but he does not like it. Nor does he like the idea of his lover crying over a dream. He would certainly hold you close and stroke your back. It's all right, my aunt. I've got you. Everything will be fine. I'll make sure of it, he says, and you melt into his touch, closing your eyes, as you let out a soft sigh. I'm so glad you're here, Shell. I'm sorry I woke you up, but I was terrified. You don't know what I saw. And you don't have to tell me, unless you want to, of course. So after some hesitation... You decide you want to tell him, and he listens, comforting you throughout. Dreams can be a scary thing, and your mind can conjure up the worst things, the worst possibilities in your mind, just to put it in while you sleep. It was cruel, really. So, for that alone, he would take you on a night trip. The team of you walking around beautiful places in Leah. 
that he has kept to himself, because he really couldn't sleep and did not want to think about anything. And when the morning comes, he will sleep, this time, while he's holding you in his arms, watching over you like a guardian angel. Minty, Minty was quite shocked when he was woken up in the middle of the night. By a scream, no less. He did not mind staying up the night, or being woken up at night. But the circumstance in which he's woken up says it all. He was very startled when he heard the sound of your scream, first thing in his day, or night. Regardless, it was still not the very first thing you'd want to hear after waking up, and it was quite unsettling. He jumped, then looked around, scanning for any potential danger, before he just looked at you, and he knew immediately that you were having a nightmare, a particularly bad one. So, gently, slowly, he wrapped his arms around you, and held you gently, as he kissed your cheek. It's all right, Wyon. You know, everything will be fine. You trust me, yeah? I'm right here, and I'm not going to leave you at all. So whatever you're scared of, just know it can't get to you. We're in this together, whatever it is. He says, trying to comfort you and give you some words of encouragement and so you could know he would never leave your side. You would never have to face anything alone. Nightmares were dreams, yes. But dreams were always conjured up by reality. And to think that you were stressed or afraid or upset about something to that degree, he didn't know what it was. But he would be by your side, no matter what it is. He does not want to get to the bottom of it. Not if you don't want him knowing. But at the very least, he just needed you to know that he would be there. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're afraid of, he'd be there, supporting you, protecting you, until you were okay, and until you knew that everything would be just fine.